In this session we're going to examine the lens flare lighting available within the Action 3D compositing environment. A few main points to mention is that the lens flare exists in true 3D space, so this allows you to really push the 3D compositing envelope. Secondly, everything that I'm about to show you is component and procedural based. This means you have unlimited creativity in designing the lens flare, whether you're doing practical compositing or creative design, whatever the task may be. The example that I have for you is a 3D composite that I've built and what we're going to do is we're going to use lens flares as a practical element in the scene to make it blend down a little bit better. Now to add a lens flare into the scene is really straightforward. We need to make sure that we're inside the node bin and you could either be looking at the all nodes view or you can switch to the relighting view by clicking on its tab. In the relighting menu you can see here we have all these different components which can be used to do different effects. The first main thing is in order to apply a lens flare you need to have a light in the scene. So selecting the light node here you can either double click on it or you can simply drag it up into the scene and this will then start shading the 3D composite. Once your light has been applied you can then go ahead and attach a lens flare directly onto that light. The way you do this, same as before, you can either drag the lens flare up into the view or simply just double click and this will add the default lens flare onto the scene for you. When the lens flare has been applied, if I just click and drag the light in the view, you can see that we have this amazing interaction and the lens flare is now showing us an exact result of what you would get. Now the lens flare is operating in true 3D space. To illustrate this to you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from the Move option over to the Orbit option. Now with this cursor I can click and drag the view and you can see by moving this world around in 3D space you can see exactly how the lens flare is behaving inside the 3D composite. So even if you were to create realistic 3D camera moves with the camera inside of action you can actually have the lens flare completely integrated into the scene with minimal effort. Now let's go ahead and just reset this camera. So I'm going to go to the object menu and we choose the default cam tab and you'll see that there's a reset button and this will just reset the default camera. Now the way that lens flares work is actually based on two components. You've obviously got the lens flare that's attached to the light and then you've got this little icon here known as the pivot point. So if I switch back from orbit down to move mode and I grab the pivot point as we move this around you can see how I can actually angle where the flaring takes place. Now the one thing about this is obviously we're positioning this anywhere in 3D space. So if you have a look at the object menu down here on the bottom right, you can see it says lens flare object. We've got the pivot control, so this controls the pivot. But on the left hand side, the actual lighting position controls where the flaring is happening. Now as for the flaring that comes down this direction here, the way to understand what's going on is if you imagine a virtual line between the light and the pivot point, a straight virtual line that goes all the way down and all the flaring and patterns are actually coming down that line. What you're seeing is in fact mimicking what true camera lenses do if you're actually filming let's say for example directly into sunlight and you're getting flaring on the lens. So this is just to give you an idea of what's going on. Now in terms of how the light works there's a lot of different elements to look at. The first thing is the global control of the light. The first thing is if you were to adjust the light's intensity so the brightness of the light, you can see how this will affect not only the light but the lens flare as well. However, if you go over to the lens flare object properties, you will see that it has its own global settings too. So you can actually use the light to shade a scene, but then you can also adjust the individual intensity of that lens flare as well. So there's a lot of degree of control where you can make these various different adjustments. So you've got global intensity, you've also got scaling intensity of the lens flare as well as position offsetting. So you can actually offset the lens flare away from the light and this will then give you a slightly different angle in terms of how the lighting and the lens flare is being projected into the scene. The second function we need to know about lens flares is what we refer to as occlusion. Occlusion simply means when one object goes behind another and it is occluded or hidden. So to illustrate this, what we'll do is we'll grab the light that we have inside the scene and I'm going to push it back in Z space. Now I know that my layers are positioned slightly back, so if I set this to about 1500 in the negative, 
it pushes the lens flare back. The lens flare is now behind it, but you can see it's now disappeared. If I now grab the light and move it up above the wall, you can see how the lens flare reapplies. So this is what we call occlusion. Now obviously because my scene has gone very dark, this is because the light is behind the other layers in 3D space. So just to make this look a little bit more worthwhile, what we're going to do is just go back to the node bin. and I'm simply just going to throw another light into the scene. And with this light selected, I'm just going to go to my object menu and we'll push it back in 3D space. And I'll just move it behind the camera. So you can see how I've now got the combination of two lights, one light in the scene and the other one controlling the lens flare. So if we were to go ahead and select the lens flare one more time, you can see it brings up the occlusion menu. Now if I was to take that lens flare and move it around behind objects, you can see how it gradually fades away. This fading sensation is being created through the occlusion. You can see the occlusion slider is set to a specific value which allows it to gradually fade away. If I was to decrease the occlusion slider and then move the light again, as you can see when it moves behind a surface it simply just pops off the screen. So you've got the dynamic control to see exactly how flares will react when they go behind objects. The other option you have there is the occlusion curve. You can control how that fade actually occurs, whether it's a gradual fade from white to black or by putting key points in the curve. So if I switch to the add menu and put a few key points in the curve, you can see now when I switch to move mode and I move the light inside my scene, you can see as it gets to the edge of a surface, it starts to pop the light on and off. So you once again can simulate real world environments that we have when it comes to occlusion. The other options you've got there is the border effects option and the border effects option allows you to simply control the way the lens flare reacts when it comes to the edge of a border or the center of a screen. Very simply put, if I was to increase the gain value here on the slider, as I now select and move the lens flare to the edge of the screen, you can see how it brightens up. You can control this whether you want to work with it as a box, whether you want to use horizontal curves, or whether you want to use vertical curves. So you can totally define exactly how lens flares will react on those borders and you can actually control the size of these boxes as well. Now let's go ahead and switch over to a dual view split. So press Alt 2 on the keyboard. On the right hand side if you select the view and press F4 you will get the result view. If you click on the left hand side and press Escape you should have the schematic view. You can see in the schematic view, if you press spacebar, you can pan the view around and you can see the lens flare and you'll notice all these component textures coming off. Every component of the lens flare is actually textured as well. We can select each texture, so for example if I select the iris one on the left, you will see that on the object menu all of these have got their own basics and all the values inside there can be animated from intensity to scaling to spreading to number of flares. These are all options which I encourage you to please try out. They also all have their own pattern menus. So the patterns are procedurally generated. In other words, they're generated by action. They're not image files. So you can control the way they're blurred, the color, the way they impact on the lens flare. And this is all part of those objects which take work across the virtual line between the lens flare and the pivot point. So you can dynamically use this to create a brand new looking lens flare which someone may have never seen before or if you're trying to mimic realistic lenses these are the perfect tools to allow you to do these particular types of controls. Now there are other patterns and other textures which are available which are not put up with the default lens flare. So if we were to switch back to the node bin, under the relighting tab you will see that there is a glint option. So if you click the glint texture and drag it into the schematic view, you can see how it attaches itself to the lens flare. Now if we were to double click to call up its properties, if I simply go to the basics menu and scale up the glint, you can see what it's doing. It's creating a very spiky looking effect on the lens flare. Once again, you can go ahead and customize this to your liking. The other option you have here which is very very useful is you've got something called the lens texture. So once again go back to the node bin and under the relighting you can see there's the lens texture icon. Double click on this. What this lens texture does is it simulates scratches and dust and imperfections on the lens when the light shines directly at it. So you'll see if I go to the basics menu of the lens texture, if I start increasing the intensities of this, you will see imperfections and scratches appear. 
Now, this is something that naturally occurs when you point a camera directly into sunlight or sunlight is hitting a lens from an angle. The great thing about this is you can go ahead and tweak everything in there. You can add spots, dust, scratches. You can vary them. You can adjust all the settings once again through experimentation through the menus. Now the one thing is if you are not happy with any element that the procedural texture generator is creating, you can very easily go ahead and texture your own elements as well. So for example, let's look at the lens texture. If you select it in the schematic view, and now let's go back to the media menu, you click new media and this takes us back to the desktop. And here you can see I've got a smoke simulation that's been filmed and we want to use this as a volumetric lighting effect when the lens flare hits the lens. So if we click on the top left hand corner of the clip twice to bring it into the composite, you can now see in the schematic view it's added itself in as a layer. So simply click and drag the elements down to delete them. What you can now do is you can now select the lens texture in the schematic view. Make sure the smoke is selected in the media list. And what you do is switch to the node bin and in the relighting menu you will see that there is the diffuse texture. Simply double click on this and you will now notice that the diffuse texture has been applied to the lens texture. So using my own elements I can completely retexture the way the lens flare looks. Once again simply going into the basics menu upping the intensity you can see you have two sliders you have inner and overall. Inner is obviously the smoke effect happening within the brightness of the glow whereas the overall brings out the overall texture and this can be a static frame if you're trying to just reflect through glass or in this case I'm using smoke which is just trying to emulate moving dust particles as the lens flare enhances itself inside of the screen. Now to finish off what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go to the load menu and I'm going to load up a setup. When working with smoke Smoke will come with a whole bunch of preset lens textures. These will all be simulating real lenses so that you, if you know the lens, you can apply the correct lens to that particular lens flare and get a matching effect if necessary. Once again, you can see if I press escape to go to the schematic view, you can see all the components. You can notice how I can attach multiple lens flares to a light to create some really incredible effects and you can go ahead and tweak them to as much as you like, giving you total creative control over the lighting inside your scene.